actress Rosalind Sanchez, who picked up her entire life in Puerto Rico to try it all in, well, started out in the story of Queens and eventually ended up in Hollywood. She talks about speaking very little English, but having a view and a vision of what her life would be like. Rosalind, as I said, you're on set right now. You landed the role of Elena Rourke on Fantasy Island. I mean, I love it. I... Look at you. <laughs> I love it. Okay, what would your fantasy island right now, if you could make the dream come true, where would you be? Oh, um, back home with my kids. I knew you were going <laughs> to say that. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I love it. Listen, this job has been so surreal, Tamron, because I, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. You know, my family's here. My parents are here. Um, I don't see them as much as I want to. My parents are 83 years old, you know? Oh. And the fact that at this age, I'm able to come back home and be close to them. I'm spending weekends with them. Um, I'm working with crew that I've known since I'm 19 years old when I used to work in, on TV here in Puerto Rico. Wow. So I, I, every single day I'm driving to work and I'm not kidding you, I, I count my blessings and I am so grateful to oh. God. I'm going, you know what? This is surreal. This is a fantasy. It's incredible. Aww. But I don't have my kids close and I don't have my, my, my husband. So that would be my fantasy right now. I just want to hug my kids. Look at them oh right my there. God, oh, my God. They are so <laughs> adorable. You and Eric, how long have you and Eric been married? Um, married 13, together 16 years. 16 years. And Sabella Rose is 10, Dylan is 4. And you have been so open, and I appreciate it, and I know everyone does, especially women who've gone through the challenge of IVF or the challenge of trying to start a family. It was years for you, years. It, it took me years. You know, I, I decided to become a mom late, in life, I mean, still young, I was 35 mm -hmm. when we had the conversation and we decided, you know what, let's start trying uh, for real. And it, it, three years, 30, 35 to 38, and nothing. And I was like, well, how is this possible? I'm so healthy, you know, I eat healthy, I work out, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I'm, what's happening? You know, my mom is super fertile, she had four kids, no problem. It was very confusing to me. And I knew that my whole life I battled with uh, this disease called endometriosis. Yeah. And endo is, it's hardcore, you know, and a lot of times it affects fertility. But nobody was able to prove that the reason I was not getting pregnant was because of endo. Wow. To make the story short, then at 38, I'm like, oh my God, like, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. um, and I just started doing um, artificial insemination. I did seven of them, nothing happened. Wow. Then I started doing IVF. My first IVF took... Uh, so I was so lucky, you know, Sabella came, came, but then I wanted to have another one and it took me six years to accomplish that and six more IVFs. Mm. So I put my body through hell and back, to be honest with you, to be able to get pregnant. And I know it's because I waited for too long and listen, who knows why, you know, but yeah. I feel like if, if I can give anybody, any female advice when yeah. it comes to if you ever want to be a mom, um, you know, the body changes, you know, yeah. biologically, you know, an egg, of a 25-year-old is not the same of, uh, than an egg of a 38-year-old, you know? And the chances, you know, the eggs don't, don't be called... They start... I feel bad saying this, but the, the, the quality of the egg, no, well, no, that's a the, Well, that's not... You shouldn't feel bad. That's a medical reality. And, you know, it's always yeah. tough because I, I've talked about freezing eggs and I try to, to, to be open about my uh, IVF journey understanding that it's expensive. And so when people say something like, okay, you're 25, freeze your eggs, it's like, I'm still trying to pay off my loans in college, or I'm trying to start my job. So it's a, it's a difficult conversation. And, and yeah. we use the phrase, you bossed up in your personal life because it does take, the, again, that fortitude to say, okay, I'm gonna put everything to the side and focus in on this at the time you were trying to grow your career and also not beat yourself up because it's not working out the way you thought yeah. it would and, and, and go through that. But you and Eric, you mentioned, have been married uh, and been together uh, many, many years. Mm -hmm. I love that you have this podcast. Um, he said, she said, it's Ella Dijo. Am I saying Ella. it right? Ella yeah, Dijo. Ella. Ella, Ella Dijo. Dijo. And you go, it, he said, she said, because you said you're complete opposites of one another. Yeah. Crazy. It's like everybody that knows us, that's a whole laugh. You know, like nobody understands how do they make it work because... <laughs> We're just very different, you know, culturally, uh, personality-wise. Um, but it's been amazing. You know, I think that's that's the reason why we make it work, because we just keep each other entertained. And, and you know, I'm an Aries. It's a cancer. It's like, Ooh. we always make this joke 
that he controls my fire and I boil his water <laughs> because he needs a little bit of, you know. Um, but it's been it's been amazing, you know. And he's also an actor. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, you know. It, it's it's a constant negotiation yeah. because of traveling, because of the the demanding nature of, of what we do for a living. So it's good that we both do the yeah. same thing because we understand each other, yeah. but it's not as great because there's a lot of elements that come into play that you have to constantly be communicating, saying, how do we do how this? How do we do it? Hits. I love yeah. that you said it's a constant negotiation. I love that the title of the, the podcast translates to he said, she said, because we heard from you, but what does he have to say? Eric sent us a message. Let's play it. A surprise. Surprise. <laughs> What's up, baby? I hope that the show is going great. I'm so proud of all that you're doing. Even though I may not get to say it enough because life gets crazy, you're kicking butt. I always admire your strength and your commitment to do everything that you do to the fullest. Even while working, you're still managing to rescue dog after dog after dog. So I love all of those qualities about you and just know that we all miss you. We truly do. And uh, I love you to death. Wow, that's so sweet. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I love him. He's 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 good people. He's a good man. And to deal with me, you know, I'm not easy. <laughs> so um, God bless him. God bless him. He's amazing, and he's given me the two most incredible kids ever. And they were so difficult to conceive, and he was there along throughout the whole journey. And I know I put him through hell and back because. As you know, you know, when you do IVF, you are taking time on. <laughs> like, um, so God bless him. God bless him. He's amazing. You know what? God bless mm -hmm. you because your vulnerability and your openness is why we've loved you and watched your career for many, many years. And we celebrate everything that comes your way. Have fun on set, Rosalind.